الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. So this is a very important hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I believe we've talked about this hadith before. And the hadith is about those things that are halal and those things which are haram and those things which are between the halal and the haram. The things that we don't know if is it halal or is it haram. This is the hadith of Abdullah an uh, an Abi Abdullah Nu'man ibn Bashir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu maqal sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul inna al-halal bayyan wa inna al-haram bayyan wa baynahuma umurun mushtabihah la ya'lamuhunna kathir min an-nas faman attaqa faman attaqa shubahat faqad istabara li dinihi wa irdihi wa man waqa'a fi shubahat waqa'a fi al-haram كراعي يراعي حول هما يشق أن يرتع فيه ألا وإن لي كل ملك هما ألا وإن هما الله محرمه ألا وإن في الجزد مضغة إذا صلح صلح جزد كله وإذا فسد فسد جزد كله ألا وهي القلب رواه بخاري ومسلم من هذا الحديث الذي رواه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم and it was narrated by uh, Abi Abdullah Nu'man Ibn Bashir. Who narrated? Was it Abu Huraira? No. No, it was Abi Abdullah Nu'man Ibn Bashir. Radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that verily the lawful things are clear and the uh, unlawful things are clear. And between them are doubtful things that most people don't know. And whoever and whoever fears the doubtful things, meaning fears falling into doing the things they don't know about, then they have become safe in their religion and in their honor. And whoever does the doubtful things, then they will fall into the Haram. Just like the shepherd that when he has his sheep and they graze around an unlock, uh, a place that doesn't belong to him, that they fall into that place. Meaning that they go and they graze from property that is doesn't belong to him. And verily every king or everyone who owns something, they have a, an area that they're in charge of that they protect. And verily, the things that are sacred to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He has declared sacred, they are the things that Allah has declared sacred and protected. And verily, within the body is a piece of flesh. And if this piece of flesh is protected and is, is healthy, then the whole body is healthy. And if this piece of flesh is sick, then the whole body is sick, and verily it is the heart. And this is related in Bukhari and Muslim. What does this mean? This means that the lawful things are clear, and the unlawful things are clear in Islam. And between them are doubtful things, things we don't know, whether they're halal or haram. So we know, for example, that eating pork, is it halal, Rashad? Eating pork? No, it's haram. Is drinking alcohol and, and taking drugs, is that halal? No, it's haram. So those are the haram things. And the halal things, we know we can eat animals that come out of the sea. We can eat anything that isn't mentioned in the sharia as haram. So yes, you can eat Twinkies, you can eat hot dogs that were killed Islamically, that the, the meat was killed Islamically, and it was from halal sources. You can drink uh, juice, you can eat any kind of vegetables and so forth, those things are clear. We know those things are, are halal. Okay? There's no doubt about that. But in between that halal and the haram, there are some things we don't know. We don't know if they're halal or haram. And those things, if you want to protect your religion, you will stay away from them. Because you don't know if it's halal or haram. So if you have to ask yourself the question, is this halal? Is this haram? I don't know this kind of, uh, I bought some sauce, I bought some ketchup, I bought some stuff, and it says it has alcohol in it. Or it says it has this in it. 
or this toothpaste has this in it. If you have doubt about it being halal, then it's better to stay away from it. And that's what we gain from this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِي شُبَحَاتِ وَقَعَ فِي الْحَرَامِ Whoever falls into the doubtful things, they're going to fall into the haram. Because they say, oh, I don't know if it's halal, I don't know if it's haram. I'll try it anyway. And then they fall into the haram. Because they're not trying to protect their honor. And they're not trying to protect their religion. They're not trying to protect themselves from the haram. So if you think something is possibly haram, stay away from it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, in related to this, he said, لا يعلمهن كثير من الناس He said, and many people don't know if they're halal or haram. But, what's implied in the hadith, as the scholars uh, mentioned, is that there are some people who know. The rasikhun fil ilm, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, that the scholars, those well-grounded scholars, they know whether it's halal or haram. So some people know whether it's halal or haram. Because Allah has given them that knowledge. And how has Allah given them the knowledge? Because they studied Islam. They studied, they know the Quran. And they know the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And they know the methodology of the Salaf Asali. They know what the, how the Sahaba were practicing and understood these issues in Islam. Because they're well grounded in the religion, they can make fatwa. These are the scholars, the great, the, the ones that Allah has taught, told us in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, in the Yaksha Ibadi al Ulama, or Kama Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Allah has mentioned that the people who fear Him the most are the Ulama. So the scholars, they know whether it's halal or haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَسَلَ أَهْلِ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And ask the scholars if you don't, if you don't know. Take that out of your mouth. So if you don't know if something is halal or something is haram or you need to know how to do something in Islam, who should you ask? You ask Allah, of course. But who should you ask if you need to know right away and answer? If you you, you, you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you read the Quran to, to get, but who should you ask? Who should you ask? Huh? Okay, the scholars. We ask the scholars. Those people who are grounded in knowledge, who know. Because Allah has favored them with knowledge. Because they practice what they preach. And they have studied the Quran. And they've studied the Sunnah. And they studied the methodology of the Sahaba. And the Tabi'een. With Tabi'at Tabi'een. And the scholars all the way until this time. So those people we trust. And those people we go for fatwa. About whether something is halal or haram. So the Prophet ﷺ said that if you don't know if something's doubtful, you should stay away from it. And if you stay away from it, you'll protect your Islam. And you'll protect your honor. Because if you go into something doubtful, maybe you'll get embarrassed. Because you didn't know if it was halal or haram, so you decided to do it anyway. And then your honor is trampled upon. The people will know bad things about you because you fell into something bad. You fell into something haram because you didn't know and you just followed the doubtful things. But if you stayed away from the doubtful things, you protected your honor, and you protected your Islam. You didn't fall into the haram. And the Prophet ﷺ said at the last part of the hadith, he said, and, and verily in the body is a morsel of flesh. There's a piece of flesh. Meaning, and he said, the piece of flesh is the heart. He said, if it is healthy, everything in your body will be healthy. And if it is sick, if your heart is sick, everything in your body will be sick. You'll have the, the thing. So, for example, the person who has taqwa, they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're really fearing. They're studying Islam and they're practicing. This person, because they will stay away from the haram, that means their heart is healthy. And that means their outside will be healthy. They will do the lawful things that Allah has ordered them to do. And they will stay away from the things Allah has ordered them to stay away from. They're healthy. Their limbs are healthy. You'll see them practice in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That's a sign of good health. That's a sign of good health on your limbs and your heart. But some people, they get into the haram, their heart is sick. They have some sickness. And people have different levels of iman and different levels of sickness. Some people are very sick. They don't pray anymore. The women, they don't wear hijab. They have boyfriends and girlfriends. They drink alcohol. They do drugs. Those people are very sick. 
They're so far away from Islam. They're still Muslim, inshallah ta'ala, as long as, even if they're doing these sins, but their heart is so sick that they're heading to, towards kufr. They're going on the path to kufr. They're going on the path of disobedience to Allah. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, a great scholar, he said that kufr, uh, he said, ma'asi baridu kufr. He said that sins are like the means to disbelief. The more that you do sins, the more you're going towards kufr. Okay? So the person who drinks more and more alcohol, they, do, they don't pray their salats. When everybody else is making salat, they say, no, 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 I think I'm going to sleep. No, 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 I think I'm going to go party. No, I'm not going to watch this movie. No, I'm going to do this. Instead of praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the right of Allah to be worshipped. Haq Allah The right of Allah is to be worshipped by a slave. That's the right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over us as his slaves. I did not create man in the jinn except for what? What's a, why did Allah create us? Create us? To worship him. Jazakallah khayna. Allah yibarak fiqh. So that's the purpose. So then we have to give Allah his haq. And when we give Allah his haq, that makes our heart clean. That Those are the means to make yourself clean. If you want to get a clean heart, do you want to get a clean heart? Yes. Okay, then you have to read more Quran. And you have to, we talked about it before a couple weeks ago in a hadith about dhikr. The more you make dhikr, this also cleans your heart. Because you're remembering Allah. If you remember Allah a lot, you're not going to have time to do something haram. You're going to be too busy. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. If you say astaghfirullah a lot, you don't have time to look at the haram. You don't have to, time to follow the haram. You don't have time to eat and drink the haram. Okay? So this is a clean health, a clean, healthy uh, heart. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِذَا فَسَدَ فَسَدَ جِزِدُ كُلُّ And he said, if, the, the, if this thing is sick, then the whole body becomes sick. Because the person who's doing the sinful stuff, they just become, especially when they're, when the sinfulness overtakes them totally, they're just sick. They don't pray anymore. If you ask them, why don't you pray so-and-so? They say, I, I just can't. I, I'm not going to pray this time, but, but I'm going to, inshallah, in the future. But it's because they're very sick. That person needs so much help, you have to make dua for them. And you have to try to help them and invite them back to the salat. Because a person who like that is so is one of the sickest people. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Man taraka salat faqad kafara. He said, whoever leaves the prayer is uh, has disbelieved. So a huge, or many of the scholars, some of the scholars I should say, they say that the person who doesn't pray anymore is a kafir, is a disbeliever. They're not even Muslim anymore. Some of the scholars say that. And they have a right to say so because this is what the adilla, this is what the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah shows us. Some of the scholars say, no, they're not kafirs, but they are wicked sinners. They're fujar. They're very wicked sinners. They're just in disobedience to Allah. We don't, you can't trust them. You, you, uh, you just need to make dua for them and call them back to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, call them back to the Quran and the Sunnah to make salat. So that is a bad situation to be in. So always make your prayer, guard your prayer. That's going to help you. And and that's going to help your heart. By remembering Allah, making dhikr, by praying to Allah, and staying away from the doubtful things. Some other important things we need to uh, uh, realize with this hadith is that, for one, that we seek fatwa, that we seek religious knowledge and, and verdicts about what we're doing when we have a serious question we should go to people who really know about Islam. Don't You can't just ask anybody. You can't ask just anybody You just because he's an imam. Or just because he, he studies a little bit of Islam. Or she studies a little bit of Islam. Or she memorized the Quran. No. That doesn't mean they have knowledge. Real knowledge. And the rasikhun of al These people are the, the major scholars. These are the people who fear Allah. They practice. And they really know Islam. Not, they don't, you know, mashallah, we have some books here. That doesn't mean we know Islam. That doesn't have, you know, that means we're trying to learn more. But the peace, the rasikhun of al those people who fear Allah, they stay away from the haram, they stay away from the doubtful matters, and they, they memorize the Quran and they practice it. They memorize a lot of the sunnah and they practice it. They memorize the aqwal of the ulama, the scholars before, their statements, their, uh, uh, and how they understood Islam, and they practice it. Those are the rasikhun of al 
They're firmly grounded in knowledge. And they teach people the, be the, the, the easy things, and then they teach them the hard things. They don't start off, hey, I'm going to teach you things way up here. They teach you the small things first to learn about Tawheed, to learn about Aqidah, to learn how to pray, to learn how to make wudu. And then they start you on the next level. And then they start you on the next level. Then you can get into bigger issues. But you have to concentrate on the small issues. This is the Rasikhun of Al-Ilm. This is how they teach us. Uh, some of the benefits we gain from this hadith is that we should stay away from the haram things. Those clear things. And that this is from the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he made lawful things for us clear and he made unlawful things for us clear. Also, we should stay away from the doubtful things. If something is you're not sure about, for example, a type of food that you want to buy, and you don't know if it's halal or haram, what should you do? If you don't know if it's halal or haram, just leave it. Jazakallah khairan. You should leave it. This is what the ulama, they advise us to do. And when you leave it, guess what? This is from, this is a beautiful word in Arabic, from wara. This is from, um, this is from humbleness and humility and God-fearfulness and God-consciousness. It's just that you have wara. That you fear Allah. That is a person, that's the real mu'min. Because the person with wara, that means when they close their door by themselves, they fear Allah. Not because the people are watching, but because they really fear Allah. That's the person who cries in their salat. They cry in their salat, not for the people, but they cry in their salat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have wara. And it's from wara that you leave the shubahat, that you leave the doubtful things. Also, this hadith gives us, it shows us the importance of, in, of seeking the knowledge. That you gotta get, you guys, that's why I'm trying to teach you Arabic. Why? So you can get to these books right here. Wallahi, there's nothing better than this. Nothing more beautiful than opening up the books. And you're not going to get the books in English. You're going to get some of them, alhamdulillah. There's many translated good things out there. And there's many translated good lectures. But you want to go to the sources. The sources are there. Those are the sources. What the scholars from before, what they left us. What the scholars of today have left us. What the hadith of the Prophet wasallam said in the original language. And what language did the Prophet uh, speak? Yeah. He spoke Arabic. So that's why we got to learn the Arabic. What language is the Quran in? Sinan. What language? Is it in Vietnamese? Arabic. No. So that's why we need to learn the Arabic language. And we need to seek knowledge. The Prophet Sallallahu said in this beautiful hadith, he said, Man salaka tariqan yal talmisuhu bihi alman sahalallahu lahu tariqan al jannah. That whenever, that whoever goes on the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for them jannah. So I think, you want to go to jannah, right? You want to go to jannah? Do you want to go to jannah? Allah Yibarak Fiqh, I want to go to Jannah too. Guess what? One of the biggest, best ways to get to Jannah. Who knows? Who knows from a related to the hadith I've spoken about, many hadiths we've shared before. Huh? Huh? Okay, yeah, reading about hadith, but give me something a little more general, huh? Huh? Uh huh. Praying Salah, reading Quran, but. Okay, learning the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So all of that is included in knowledge. By seeking Islamic knowledge. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْمَرْعِ إِنْ قَتَعَ الْعَمَلَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ الْأَسَدَكَ جَارِيَ الْعَمْنِ يَنْتَفَعْ بِي وَوَلَدٍ صَالِحًا يَدْعُو لَهُ رُوَاهُ مُسْلِمٌ in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet sallallahu said that if a person dies, their deeds uh, are stopped except three. The first one is sadaqa uh, jariyah. That means you do some charity and it stays with you after you die. Meaning maybe you bought a, uh, uh, you built a masjid. So people pray in that. Every time the people pray, you're getting ajr even though you died. Or you bought a house for students of knowledge to live in, or something like this, and you, it's free for them, no rent. 
that you're getting reward for the knowledge they seek and you're making it comfortable for them to seek knowledge. You're getting edger. Or whatever kind of, or some charity and the people that you're feeding people, the poor people, the starving people. You're getting reward for that. The second one the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in there, al ilm yantafa'bi. He mentioned that knowledge that people benefit from. So if you, by seeking knowledge, and later you leave some knowledge, you write some books, and you die, and people read your books, and they benefit from those books, those books called to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and they call to the understanding of the Salaf al the pious predecessors, then you're going to get reward even in your grave. Even in your grave, you're going to be getting the ajr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after you died. And the last one is righteous children. That means if you die and your children make dua for you, then you're going to get ajr. So you can pray for your parents when they die. And your grandparents when they die, you can make, you know, make dua for them. You can make umrah and hajj, extra umrah and hajj for them as sadaqah. And that's going to help them. You know, that's going to be something that's going to help them removing some of their sins. You know, Allah will forgive them and Allah may raise their 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 uh, status in Jannah. Okay? So, the, 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 the shahid or the purpose here is that knowledge is one of the highest things you can do in Islam and it is one of the quickest ways to paradise. And knowledge helps you see what's halal and what's haram and what's the shubahat and how to stay away from the shubahat and there's many many other benefits from this hadith and I think I will end it there and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with al nafi rizqan tayba wa amala mutaqabbilan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam